In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to make a cinemagraph. And a cinemagraph is basically a photograph that has some aspect of um, motion to it. It usually is repetitive motion. Um, it gives the viewer an illusion that they're looking at something that is a video, but it's actually uh, just an animated GIF. Um, I have my footage uh, inside After Effects here. And if we just sort of skim through it, you can see that it's just somebody my trusty stagehand opening up a uh, can of seltzer and uh, <laughs> pouring it into a glass. And what we're going to do is basically isolate a very small moment of the um, of the video and uh, isolate the movement, and then. Uh, composite the two together so that most of the photo is a still image and there's one aspect of it that does does move. Um, just be warned this is not the most interesting cinemagraph ever um, but it's the footage that I had today. <laughs> so hopefully this will give you a, a starting point for your own um, projects. So I'm inside After Effects and I have uh, my seltzer movie in the uh, work area here and uh, cinemagraphs work best when uh, the motion is uh, repeated as I said before. Um, it also works best if you can try to have as seamless a loop as possible. So what you want to do is find an area where there's not a lot of movement in the area that you want to isolate. So that kind of looks like a nice little starting spot there so I'll go ahead and move this over. Now for my uh, RAM preview this is going to uh, be helpful. We'll go ahead and just sort of loop it and so we can see we can see what's happening. Um, but what I'm going to do is you can see where the sort of there's a hiccup with the looping. Um, because this is going to be still and this is going to be still and this is going to be the only part that's moving, I think we're going to be able to work with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to my area so that I've got kind of an isolated aspect there. And the first thing that you want to do um, after you've isolated sort of your area there is you want to create a still. And the easy way to do that is to come up to composition and do save frame as and do file. And down here in the render queue it will pop up uh, current settings and Photoshop and we'll say um, go ahead and change the name uh, Just save it as a Photoshop file is fine. Um, and then I uh, click the render button. Shouldn't take very long to render out the still. It's the best sound in the world right there. We'll go ahead and import the, uh, the still file in. Jump back to my composition and uh, how you order the layers is going to depend on, on what you want to uh, sort of isolate there. We'll go ahead and drop the uh, still frame on the bottom. And we'll just make sure it's under there. I'm going to go ahead and create a mask on my uh, QuickTime movie layer using my pen tool. And we can edit this later if we need to, so I'll just make it rough to start with. And what this does is it isolates that area of motion and it only reveals this part of the video. So if I turn off the visibility of my Photoshop file, you can see what's happening there. Um, so if I turn this back on and if I use my regular selection tool to basically deselect the mask and now I p do a RAM preview again, um, this will give me my little movement there. Um, I'm not that psyched about what's happening down here, so we'll uh, make some adjustments. Um, and we'll try that. A little bit of a hiccup. We'll go in and take a look at the mask. And uh, we have the option to create a feather around the mask, so maybe we'll jump that up to 20 pixels and see what see what that does. 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time tweaking so uh, so that you can get on with making your own cinema graph, but you get the idea. Um, so now that we have this, uh, what we want to do is uh, we'll go ahead and change that name. Okay, so. We'll go ahead and uh, add this to the render queue. And for my render settings, one of the things that I want to change is the uh, frame rate. The frame rate right now is 30. Um, I'm going to drop it down to uh, 10. And again, we don't need a super smooth animation for this kind of uh, kind of thing, so we can go below the uh, the normal rates that we usually work with. And the other thing to take a look at uh, here is that the size of the, uh, the size of the clip is 1280 by 720. And we're going to knock this down when we get into Photoshop. But for right now, I'm going to export at the full uh, full size version uh, just so that I have that as an export so if I need for some reason to make this into a, a larger quality file later I haven't uh, I haven't uh, lost that chance so if I click OK and cl click render doesn't take that long <laughs> so um, now what we're going to do we'll go ahead and hide After Effects and uh, this is my file right here kind of bad working practice to have it on the desktop but it's easy for me to show you what I'm doing and I'm just gonna take this and drag it over to uh, Photoshop and Photoshop will accept the QuickTime movie it's a nifty little trick um, and it, Photoshop is where we're going to uh, turn it into an animated GIF and uh, use the save for web function as a way to uh, to work with the work with the file. Um, this is a little uh, warning that Photoshop will bring up. Uh, the pixel aspect ratio correction is for preview purposes only. Turn it off for maximum image quality. And so, if I click OK, when it opens up, you'll see that we have a uh, distorted image here. Um, and that's because of that pixel correction. If I come up to view and if I deselect this, then you can see that my file looks the way that I uh, kind of expect for it to. If you look down here in the Photoshop layers, if you haven't worked with uh, animation inside Photoshop before, you can see that there's a little icon that shows that we have a um, film strip here. And if I go to window and animation, a timeline pops up here at the bottom. And if I go through, uh, you can see can see the animation there. Um, if I press the space bar, you can see the animation go. And there's my infinite pouring. <laughs> so um, now, really the only thing that we're using in Photoshop is that save for web uh, so that we can turn it into an animated GIF. So we'll show you a couple of the options here. Uh, we'll work with the Optimize tab because it just gives us the best uh, kind of way of looking at what we're, what we're doing here. Um, I'll go ahead and slide this over so that you can see the motion and, and what, what it is you're working with. I'm going to switch this to the GIF. And so it takes a little bit of time to update things. And then uh, one of the things that happens is that when we go to GIF, the, um, the first option that comes up is Adaptive. And this isn't always the best uh, way to isolate our colors. So if you jump up to Selective, This is going to be different for um, everyone depending on the quality of your footage and depending on the um, other kinds of ways that you're working. Um, and you also want to watch the uh, file size as you go from, from one to the other. I'm just trying to figure out which one is the best. Um, the other thing that you can do is work with the um, the dithering. Uh, right now we're on noise. If we jump to pattern, sometimes it's easier to see where they're making the little dots happen. If we jump up to diffusion, and again, it just depends on uh, the way that your footage looks. Just watch for some sort of noticeable areas. Um, we're going to uh, click this so that it jumps to uh, looping forever. And I'm going to drop the image size down to uh, maybe 700 across. 
And so we'll kind of click to activate that. We get a small size GIF there. Jump to forever and then uh, save. And the GIF file is going to work, hopefully. And then we hide Photoshop. And we're going to go ahead and uh, open this with um, Firefox. Oh, and it jumped in over there. So now when we open it up, we can see that we've got the uh, infinite pour here. Um, Certainly some more creative uh, possibilities that you can do with this, but this is just a quick way to show you. Um, have fun creating your uh, cinemagraphs, and if you have any questions, let me know.